Jillian Heitland, please come to the office. Jillian Heitland. You should, have, you should have your practice guide out right now. I'll, we're going to use your uh, Chromebook here in a little bit. But for right now, you just need your um, your practice guide out. We need to finish that up today. We have our test tomorrow, just a reminder of that. Okay. All right. Um, just a reminder on the vocab that we did um, on Tuesday. If you weren't here, you can always watch that video. Uh, anyone still need that practice guide? Anyone else need it? Alright, there you go. Front, back, front. I didn't okay. save one for this one. Perfect. Okay. Um, again, we went through this on Friday, so if somebody wants to help out Ben at some point today. Um, 
basic vocab words, you write them in here. I know there's not a lot of space. You can put them off to the side. Remember, on test day, there's only going to be 14 of these. Only 14. Some of these words will be here. Some of the words won't be. It'll be, um, I might pick some of the words I skipped on um, in the book. Because I basically, I went through the book on chapter one. I, I picked every other word here. That's all I did. Just picked every other bold word that we talked about in class. Anyway. And then I put them up here. And so there's a couple that I could pick, I could pick from the book that I skipped. I know we discussed. But again, some of these words would be there, but there'll only be 14, so they have a little more space to write in here. Okay, you just write the word down, cross it out, move on. On this, what we talked about is that some of these words are not going to be used, because they give you too many for how many spaces there are, and one of these words is used twice. And one of, you, one of those words was used twice. You can probably spot it right away. Okay, all right. Uh, we talked about number two. The big thing I'm checking on number two is looking at this picture. Make sure you make that fix. On number two, if you didn't see that, these are supposed to be planes. It got really faded, so if you need to draw these in and shade them in, that's fine. I know some people could not see that um, the day we, we did that. Um, like on test day, if there's a situation where I noticed like one of the pictures didn't show up really well, I'll put it up on the board just like this, and we'll discuss what you need to do for it to make a correction so you can see that. All right? Um, but the big thing I'm checking for is, like, are you giving me the correct number of items? You know, if they ask for two or one or whatever it is. And then are you giving me the correct notation? Are you writing a line correctly? Like two letters with arrows, or are you giving me the, like, the cursive letter, that type of thing? Um, three, are you giving me the answer in a fraction form, like one and seven eighths? Um, that type of thing. Or um, somebody said, like, this is the 14 out of 16th marker. Yeah, that's true, because that's seven eighths. It's 14 hash marks out of 16 in total. So it is seven eighths, 14 out of 16. Okay? Um, number four, we talked about how you're supposed to draw the segment, put Y in the middle, and then you label the pieces and you solve for your letter. But then you had to plug it back in because they wanted to know what Y is the is. That's good. Okay? You have to do that for number four, the second part here. Okay, five, you have to find the distance between whatever these letters are. So there's two different problems here. Okay, we did the first one together, but again, watch the video if you're not here. All right, today, we're going to continue with number six and go on. Okay? All right, today, once we get through your practice guide, um, I'm gonna have you take out your uh, your Chromebook so we can, uh, we can talk about what we're gonna do with that. And then um, then I'll give you time for you to finish up page 61 that is due at some point today, okay? Now, remember, 34 through 39 are challenge questions. I just wanna see if somebody could figure them out. That's all they were, they were challenged. They do not count against your grade. Um, I'm not gonna go through those. I wanna see how many people can figure that out. So uh, the only ones I'm checking are the ones on the top. The 1 through 8, 1 through 22, 29 and 30. Those ones I checked for sure against your grade. Okay? All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Any questions? Perfect. Uh, let's jump in. All right. On this problem, there's two ways to attempt this problem. Your goal, obviously, is to find the distance between points. That's your goal, right? To find that distance there, that red line, a segment, I should say. Okay, to do this, there's two different formulas you could use. You can use the distance formula, which is this. And this will be on the board on test day. You can use this formula. That is the traditional distance formula for a Cartesian coordinate system. Or you could use the Pythagorean theorem, which is the exact same formula. It just looks different. It doesn't look as difficult. Okay? Now, what the Pythagorean theorem is, if you're going to do this route, so I'll do both, just so you can see this. So, if you're going to do the Pythagorean theorem route, the C, this, is your distance you're trying to find. This is the C number. It's your distance, right? The A and B number is if you're to draw a right triangle here. The right triangle, so you can left right triangle. The A and B number are how long those walls are. So you can count with your fingers how long the walls are. So this wall down here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in length. This is one, two, three, three in height. And those are your A and B numbers. So you can plug those numbers in here. Six squared plus three squared equals the C squared. Okay, does that make sense like what I'm doing there? That's Pythagorean theorem. You could do that. You can count with your fingers. That's why I gave you that picture, so you could do that. Um, this turns out to be you know, 36 plus nine, because you have to square it. When you square it, six times six, that's what it means, or three times three. Um, don't do that silly thing where somebody takes six times two, it's not smart. Um, so uh, you have to square it, uh, and this equals c squared. So this 
Um, when you add these together, you get 45. And then you take the little power 2 over. And when you take the power 2, you do a square root. This is your answer. This is what I'm looking for. Now, if you type that in in a calculator, I know it'll give you an answer like 6 point something. Okay? The reason why I know it's 6 point something. Um, the square root of 36 is 6, because it's 6 times 6. That's what square roots do. You're trying to figure out what number do you take times itself that will give you 45. Like a perfect number. Well, that's not a perfect number, right? It's in between 6 times 6, which is 36, and 7 times 7, which is 49. So it's right in between them. So I knew it was 6 point something. But this is what I want. If you give me the decimal, fine. But you have to show this. How did you get your number? No one should be able to do that in their head. Okay, you should be writing something down okay, to figure out what that number is. Now, if you like that method, stick with that method. It works. It works every time, no matter what the picture is. If you're the other way, this is the same formula. It just looks different. All you're doing is you're subtracting the x numbers, which are these. These are the x numbers. Remember, x numbers come first, alphabetical order. Right? x and y, x and y. So you subtract the x numbers. So I'm going to go 4 minus the negative 2. 4 minus the negative 2 squared. And the y number subtracted. Um, so in fact, we have what? 0 and negative 3. So 0 minus negative 3. And it doesn't matter that we're using subtraction, by the way, because you're going to square it anyway. So, but I just subtract the y numbers. And so this turns out to be, uh, minus minus turns out to be a plus of 6 squared. Right, that's 4 plus 2. So it means 4 plus 2. Uh, this turns out to be 0 plus 3, because that's the negative negative cancel off, so it's 3 squared. And you see that it's the same problem. It's literally the same problem. It's the same formula. It's the same formula. It just looks different. I don't care which one you pick. If you're that person, do that. If you like to do this, if you like your very visual, do this. I don't care. So. Uh, both formulas will be on the board. I just will not explain them to you. So you've got to know how to use them. I don't care which one you pick. Okay, are we comfortable with number six now? Yeah? Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you can figure out the number of them. This is what I'm looking for. Or if you give me the decimal and calculator, it's fine. Remember, on test eight tomorrow, right? You can borrow a calculator from me. I have ten of them. There's ten normal calculators. Or if you bring your own, that's fine. You are not allowed to use a cell phone. If I see a cell phone, you just fail the test. No cell phones. I don't want it out. I don't want it near you. Put it in your bag. That's kind of the rule. I know your cell phone has a calculator, but it also has Snapchat and has Pokemon Go, and you've got everything else on it. So don't use it. All right. Let's move on. Let's go to what, number seven. Okay, number seven. You have to find the midpoint. The midpoint of this problem. Okay, this could be a Cartesian coordinate system. It could be a number line. That's what I need to mentally prepare you for. So I'm going to do the first one. I'm going to do this one for you, and then I'll prepare you if it's a number, if it's a coordinate plane. So you can find the distance there. So I don't know if we have one of those later. Is it coordinate plane? No. Okay. So um, if it's one of these, and you're trying to find the midpoint of A to C, okay, what they're looking for is what number would you land on? So, I mean, you could just do it this way. Go in, go in, go in, go in. So this is the number you land on, right? That is like perfect line balance. It's three in the middle, so what number is that? What are they jumping by? Three. So that number would be what? Negative three, that's your answer. That's like the midpoint. I don't care if it's a decimal. It could be negative three and a half for all I care. But you're going to land on some number, whatever's in the middle. So you could do that way if you're a very visual person. Or, what you do is you just add the endpoints together. You add the endpoints together, and you divide it by 2. What are the endpoints? Negative 12 and 6. You add them together and divide by 2. That's how you find the midpoint. Because this will turn out to be a negative 6 on the top, divided by 2, which is? Crazy. Negative 3. That's like your formula to find the midpoint. Add the, the endpoints together, divide by 2. Now, if you're on the Cartesian coordinate system, because I don't know what picture will be sitting here on test day. <coughs> it's too long ago, I don't remember where I put. So I don't know if it's this, or if it's the coordinate plane, um, and we can find midpoint for it. So I'll, I'll show you an example of that here in a minute. But does that make sense if it's one of those? Like I can remember the 
So it's just very visual. Use the formula to do it for the same person. Okay? All right. Now, if your problem, let's say number seven was something like this. Let's say it was like it looked like this for number seven. And you had to find the midpoint between them. Okay? Well, if you need to find the midpoint, it's somewhere in this range. That's where the middle is. So what you do is you basically do the same formula I just gave you. You add the x numbers together, and you divide by 2. Comma, you add the y numbers together, and you divide by 2. That will give you the middle of that stick. So what are my x numbers from this picture? <coughs> 4 and negative 2. So I'm going to add those together. 4 and negative 2, add them together, divide by 2. Uh, my y numbers, we went to negative 3 and 0. Add those together and divide by 2. So this is going to turn out to be, what is that, positive 2 divided by 2? And negative 3 divided by 2? And so this turns out to be 1 comma negative 1 and a half. Well, let's see if that's roughly right. 1, negative 1 and a half. Oh, this is almost perfect. It's an arrow going to find perfectly right here. So that's how you do it. That's if you have a coordinate plane. Now remember, you're not finding distance, you're finding the middle of the stick. So it's just an average. That's what an average is. You just add them together, divide by two. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions, comments, concerns, if that's your picture? I have no idea which one I put. Honestly, no idea. I don't know if I put this or it was the other one. Because we've had both in class. Okay, that formula, um, this formula for midpoint will be on the board. Explain it, I'll just have it written somewhere on the board. Okay, all right, number eight. Now, this this type of problem, number eight, it'll just have a picture of an angle, something like this. You probably recognize that problem because you recognize all of all these so far, but you probably recognize that one for sure. I'm just going to ask you a series of questions about it. So it's kind of like what you did in number two. So they're going to ask you, you know, name the vertex of an angle, name the walls of your angle, and I'm looking for correct notation. So like for instance, what is what is the vertex of angle four? What letter is sitting at angle four? U, that's how you write it. So point U. So you 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 need the point U landing one. That's a vertex. What about the sides of angle three? So here's angle three, right? What are the walls called? Can somebody give me one of the walls? WX? That's a ray, right? So Wx and the ray is going towards W. And what's the other one? Xu and the ray is going towards U. Right, those are your walls make angle three. Notice how you do walls. Rays. Rays make angles. Do you see where the letters are coming from in the picture? That was like that from right now, that one. For some reason, it was just like impossible for people to figure out in the last one. They just could not figure out how to write a wall. I got a lot of just W's and U's. Can't do that. Got to two letters. And you can give me number angles for angle two. Uh, you can give me the three letter system. That type of thing. Don't just say angle Y. No for angle two. You actually have to give me the three letters for angle two. So you have to give me this. And then where Y has to be the middle letter. Okay. Um, adjacent angles are angles that are next to each other. So really on that picture, there's there's a couple different options you have, but I think the easiest one is just these two. They're adjacent. Angle one and comma angle three. Those are adjacent to each other. They're just next to each other. Okay, I could ask for like what are complementary angles in the picture? What are supplementary angles in the picture? What's a linear pair? What's a vertical? That type of thing. Um, now obviously from the from this picture, we really couldn't do that. I don't have any 90 degree angles. Um, there's a couple angles that make straight lines, but I don't have another letter down the road to make like straight lines or uh, linear pairs. <coughs> so, but I could ask you a series of questions about that. All right, any questions, comments, concerns about number eight? Okay, pretty straightforward. It'll just be a picture, a series of questions about it. Probably expect about the same number of questions. Like you kind of expect. Some of them are very open ended, they give you kind of easy points, especially like this. Name that angle differently, you can switch the letters around. So, very easy. 
Uh, number nine. Okay, these are the ones from the last, uh, the last homework that we did where you had to do vertical, solve for a letter, and then plug it back in and do like a linear pair kind of a thing, or maybe they have to be 90. So what can you tell me about like these two angles right here? The vertical, they're equal. Vertical angles are equal, the ones that are little funnel system across from each other. So you could just set the 8y minus 102, you could set that equal to the 2y plus 6, bless you, and you can solve. You can figure out what y is. Okay? If you do it right, I think y turns out to be, let's see, a 6, goes in there once, um, once would be a 4, carry down the 8, so that would be a 8, easy. So like, if you solve it out and you actually did all your work, blah, 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 turns out to be an 18, right? Well, then what you can do is, to figure out x, you can plug the 18 back in. I don't care where you do it. I'm going to plug an 18 here, because that's your log, right? If I plug an 18 here, I can figure out what this angle is. Let's say it's just a number, but 2 times 8 is 36 plus 6, which is 42. So this angle turns out to be 42 when I plug the 18 in. Now you can find x, because what do those two angles have to add up to be? 180. Now you can solve for x. 3x plus the 42 has to equal the 180. That's make a straight. It's a linear pair. It makes a straight line. You could go the other direction. If you plug the 18 up here and you subtracted that, that would give you 42 as well, and you'd have to add these two together to make 180. That's okay. But you have to solve for both letters. So I solve for y, you can solve for x. Okay, any questions with number 9? It'll be one of those pictures we had in the homework where you had to do something like that. variables and you have to solve for one of them. Okay? Alright. And the last one. And the last one here. Probably on test day, um, I'll have two pictures sitting here. I'll probably do a better job of probably uh, giving you maybe a little more space for this problem. I'm going to see what I can do here because this one's a little more time, but I think we have plenty of space. All right, um, number 10. You have to name the polygon by its number size. So that's the classification of it. So, so how many walls are there? Seven, seven seven figures. You have to give me the name for it. Then you have to classify it as convex or concave. So what do you think this one would be? Is it convex or concave? Concave. This is, that's a cavity. Okay, that's a cavity on it. So it's concave. And then is this regular or irregular? This is irregular. It was so close to being regular. It's irregular because none of the angles are the same. They're all different angles. You can see that. So it's irregular. The walls match, which is check one, but you have to have the angles equal, which we don't have. Okay, and then the same thing over here. You give me the name of this object and uh, classify. So that's, you just expect something like that. That was from your, the latest homework, right? That was from the page 51 stuff. That's what you can kind of expect. It's just a picture classified. So we do it. I don't know if I'll number them like 10, 11. I might just put two pictures there and, and do your thing. So but remember, you gotta give me three things for each. The name of it, classify it, and then something that's regular or irregular. If it's a quad, you have to be very specific. Oh, that's a square. Okay, don't just say quad, you have to say square. That's what you mean. Maybe somebody's regular or concave or something like that. Okay, any questions, comments, concerns on your entire practice guide? At some point, I'll give you time to work, especially if somebody help out Ben today. So, you just keep going, that's what Okay, all right, here's what you need now. You need to take out your Chromebook, which I know is kind of weird, you never use them, but I would like you to take it out, please. I know all of you can probably have it, because it wasn't on. Okay, So here's what you need to do. You need to go to, it's called um, Connect Ed at McGraw Hill. I'm going to try to post this um, 
I'm going to try to post this thing on the board here. Here's where I'd like you to go. There you go. I'd like you to go to that website if you can. Tell me if it doesn't work or if it does. Perfect. Okay, so a lot of you are quick text. Okay, good. Okay, you, um, here's what I'd like you to do. On that, uh, it, ha it asks you for login, correct? You actually are already assigned a login. You just didn't know it. Okay? So how it works, and I'll do it, let's say it's for me, right? So your login information, it'd be your first name, so I'll put mine, dot your last name, and notice I use capital letters, right? So, and then the password that everyone's going to use is this. That's your password, login. Okay, now, if it doesn't work for you, just let me know. It's probably because you might have had an issue where your name was it was already taken by somebody in the system. So what we did is we just put a number behind your last name, like the number one or something like that. Um, I had somebody was unfortunate where there's so many so many uh, persons with that exact name that there he was number 123. <laughs> so the 123. So. Okay, is everyone logged in? Did it work? Tell me yes or no. Everyone's like, perfect. Okay, now, now they're there. It's probably asking you to like register or um, like get like register a book or content, right? So it's it's asking for add, right? So you can add materials, add a book. So you click the add button. Now it's asking for a 12-digit number, correct? Is everyone with me? Is anyone locked? Okay, so it's asking for 12 digits. Here it is. I'll tell you if it's like, if it, these are all capital letters, so if you want to just hit the caps lock button on your computer, I think you know you have a capital letter. Uh, all right, so, okay, R, 5, C, Z, those are all capital, that's your first four. Then you're going to go to the next, uh, next bubble over, C, H, N, T. Then you go to the next bubble, and it's D, J, and I believe that's a capital O, not a zero. And then click add, and it should like add your geometry book. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. It's no. Okay. You have your online version. So now you don't have to take that 30 pound book with you wherever you go. Make sense? So now you have every lecture using your Chromebook at all moments. I don't mind that you do that. All right. Does that help you out a little bit? Okay. Anyone's not work. Anyone not get logged in or okay. Uh, if you click on the book, can you like view it and stuff? Like open it? Does it look good? Does it look like your book? I've, I've never seen your version, I've seen mine. It like gives me like crazy a crazy like uh, teacher's edition which is ugly looking. And you can click whatever chapter and I believe you can make it full screen and whatnot and you can look at them. There's like different content. You can you can look at uh, you know powerpoints. And the thing that I like about this is if you're not getting a problem, it gives you videos and it tells you how to do it, which is interesting. That book is interactive. It wasn't just they did a nice job with not just having that stale text like a normal textbook would be. Sometimes it's a live video that you can play. Um, and it'll teach you how to do that particular problem, which I think is kind of brilliant. Um, I know at some point you will have to zoom. It gets kind of small sometimes. I understand that. So um, you can always do that two-finger pinch and zoom kind of thing like you do on an iPhone um, or an Android phone. So, all right. Everyone have success, though? Everyone got in? Perfect. All right. I want to give you that. All right. Today, you have the rest of time today. You can either mess with your textbook to get kind of familiar with it or... You can work on your practice guide, try to finish that up, um, and 
work on your page 61. That page 61 is due today. Remember, I do not check 34 through 39. I don't check those. I, I just want to see who could attempt that, and if you, you can understand what they're asking for. But the ones I am checking for, 1 through 8, 11 through 29, 20, or 11 through 22, 29, and 30. Those are the ones I'm checking for, okay? If you're done, you can turn to the basket, whatnot. Um, practice guide. Um, I wrote, all right. This is due tomorrow. Done, like completed. I know we did a lot of problems in class here, or at least I set you up for them. It's due tomorrow in class. So this is your ticket for the test. If you are done and you do not want to lose it, turn it in my basket at any point today. Okay, or tomorrow morning, I don't care. If some people like to fear they're going to lose it. Okay? If, if you are done, you can staple it. I have a staple up there. You can staple it. You don't need to do that weird like, engineering, like weird grip rule. I don't even know how you do that. Engineering. All right. So, um, but this is due tomorrow. It's like your copy for the test. You should get easy points for this thing. We did it together. The only person I'm worried about is Ben. So, all right, Ben, I'm not sure I want you to take that test tomorrow. I might just have you work in practice, guys, since you are right. literally gone like Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. So it's not helping. So, all right. like, be stress-free. Don't, like, crack yourself yet. So, okay. all right. All right, we good, though? All right, good. The rest of the time is yours. Work at your own pace. Um, is there any student council members in here that I have? Okay. Um, I'm going to be sending an email today. I think Mrs. Chenoweth already did for a sign up for um, uh, next week, which is the dress up days. We have to do a sign up where um, during the lunch period, kids um, uh, check off when you're dressed up that day. So uh, if, if you guys are in the hallways, you probably noticed that going down to the, towards the lunch rooms, they have those like colorful poster signs that's warning you what your dress up days are coming up next week. Okay, we'll try to, I think I might try to send out like a mass email tomorrow everybody warning them like what our dress up days are uh, next monday tuesday or the hallway decorations at like 6 to 9 p.m if you've signed up you don't even have to have signed up you can just show up and help kids love that if you signed up are they gonna like tell you and send email from you? no it'll it's just like you show up you help out okay that's just kind of how it works we, we want everyone to be there if you can it's a lot of fun it, you know uh, i know there's volleyball and there's cross country and there's other things going on you know football and cheerleading um, just show up in camp. I think we do it like six to nine Monday and Tuesday. It has hallways, decorations, and feather banners have to be done by Tuesday night. Like nine p.m., we cut you off. You can't do any more in the hallway. So what you should be doing this week is like getting it cut out and all prepared, and you can stick it on the wall as fast as you can. Okay, if you're prepared, seniors usually are the best ones at it. Um, feather banners, you'll get them on that night at six. I'll hand them out to whatever your class is, wherever you're centered at, and your class can work on the feather banner. That's the thing you saw last year, those, those banners leading into football places. It has to match your theme, and it has to match your hallway decorations and your A-frame. Your A-frames are available for pickup. So if you talk to Mr. Bumgard, you can pick up those A-frames. They have to be done and completed by Monday. And um, next Thursday's coronation, you guys will vote on who's going to be the homecoming king and queen on Monday or Tuesday next week. Uh, candidates will be announced tomorrow. I haven't even seen that list yet. So they'll be announced tomorrow afternoon by the office. We'll go over the speakers. And if you are one of them, um, I don't know if you have any, I have some here. So if you, uh, if you are one of them, um, then you will be uh, in my room right after school tomorrow to discuss what the details are. Okay? Um, parade Friday, uh, football game, and then dance is on Friday night. If you are going to the dance, if you're going to the dance on Friday, it's five dollars per person, five bucks per person. You don't have that date thing where you bring somebody and you get three bucks off or two bucks off. It's five dollars per person. If you're bringing a date from out of town, they have to fill out this. It's in the office. Yeah, they. Yeah, you have to. They have to have their personal information somewhere on. Okay. So, because we need to know who they are, we have to double check. Okay. Um, and then, um, if you are a couple, if you know you're taking somebody to homecoming, sign up in the office. Even if you're not if not from out of town, if you're a couple, sign up in the office. Use a couple sign. That way, you get like a you get something from homecoming. We always make like individual signs for you and your and your date, whoever that is. So, all right. So try to do that. All right. There you go. But uh, we'll probably send out a mass email tomorrow, like warning you what the uh, dress up days are what the days are for doing decorations, and we always encourage everyone to be here. The other thing we need to worry about, in that hallway, tug of war sign-ups. Oh, 
So we need we need individuals to sign up for tug of war. It could be 50 people signed up. It doesn't matter. They cannot be in a fall sport of any type, cheerleading, football, uh, cross country, or volleyball. It's got to be something other than those. And if you, you are limited to a maximum weight of 1,200 pounds. So I mean, for freshmen, you could literally have like 30 people out there and then find them get to 1,200 pounds. Okay. So uh, whatever you are, uh, seniors, it's usually like eight of them. <laughs> we'll get there. So. Uh, just make sure that um, you're signing up for that and encourage your class to sign up. Nothing's more embarrassing than only having three people sign up and they get destroyed at the coronation ceremony. So save them, get as many people signed up as possible. And it can be girls and guys, especially if you have big numbers. That's awesome. That really helps if you have a ton of people signed up. Weigh-ins are next Thursday morning. Yes, we weigh you in very discreetly. So if you're a female and you're worried about your weight or a male that you're worried about your weight, will be in a private room with a teacher that will weigh you and never release any of that information. So we just got to make sure that things are fair. And then Senior Sunrise. Do I have any seniors in here? Okay. Senior Sunrise is next Thursday. Senior Breakfast. They do it homecoming week. Um, so if you see seniors in the halls or not in with that, we'll have signs up in the hallways for that. What I'm handing back right now is homework that was checked. You have one week today to make fixes, turn it back in. Remember, if you make fixes, make fixes on the problem you missed, staple it to the back on a separate sheet of paper, and turn it back in. It's got to be stapled to the original. That way I can actually see that, yes, that was the problem that you missed. You're not making it up. It happened.